Hello, everyone. Hello. We'll get started in just a few minutes. But before we do, how is everyone doing? Are you talking to us? I don't I'm know. talking to everyone. So I mean, I would like for you to answer my question, but you don't have to. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> yeah, I'm hanging in there. What's everyone reading? Is that a better question to us? <laughs> sure. I think I have four books going right now. Um, I have Home Before Dark, The Lightning Thief, um, Stay Gold, and I'm reading a graphic novel about Calamity Jane as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading The Book Thief, which I've actually Ooh. never read, and it's breaking my heart. And I'm also reading The Three Mrs. Wrights. It's an arc that I got. It's read now on NetGalley, so y'all go read it. It's really good so far. <laughs> I actually cleared off all of my currently reading for the first time, like, ever. And so I was so excited because I'm like, now I can start like four books at once. <laughs> yeah, I, think I, was reading for it and I was like, I can't relate. <laughs> I wish, but I can't relate. <laughs> yeah, I've never done that. And so today I started The Only Good Indians, which is like a Native American horror story. And I'm super excited to dive into it. I really want to read that one. I've heard really good things about it. Five stars. <laughs> oh, you've read it? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, I'm excited. I just realized we didn't introduce ourselves, which we can do now. Um, to answer the question of what I'm currently reading, I'm also reading a lot of things. I'm reading The Lightning Thief. I'm reading uh, an arc. I think it's called Thanks a Lot Universe. Hey, Mel. Hey, Taylor. Hey, I just didn't say hey to anyone. Wow, I am so disorganized. I am the world's worst host. I am so sorry. Um, anyways. Hello everyone, my name is Meredith. You're on my channel, welcome. <laughs> you guys wanna introduce yourself as well. Hi, my name is Jess. My channel name is Books Past Bedtime, if you didn't know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Haley, I am a guest and my channel is just my name, Haley Hughes. But my Instagram is Haley Ann and every time there's an A, there's two of them. There you go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Katie, and my channel is Katie and her cats. And yes, I do have bangs now, so I prefer to be called Katie with bangs. That's what everyone at work is calling me. So I need to make that uh, change to my channel name. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> you should get one bangs for your cats, and then you can all have bangs. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Phil actually kind of looks like he has bangs already because he's got the little part in the middle. <laughs> so that's amazing. Yeah. I cut it myself too, so you can do it too. <laughs> just screw out my bangs. So I am done with that. <laughs> well, thank, thank. I can't talk today. This is perfect. Um, well, thank you guys for joining us for our live show. We are here today to talk about Loveless by Alice Oseman, and we'll give our non-spoiler thoughts first, and then we'll jump into spoilers in just a little bit. But in case you didn't read this book, what it's about is a young girl named Georgia who is just entering university. And she has always been having, she's always questioned like her sexuality and like if she's romantic. And so when she gets to college and these terms are starting to get thrown out at her, she wonders like, is that who I am? And so she kind of comes to terms with her own identity in this book. So what did everyone think of this book? Non-spoiler thoughts. What did you rate it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? So I really loved it. I think I'm going to give it five stars. Um, maybe like four and a half, but I'm probably going to give it five stars. I don't know if it's going to be like a new all-time favorite, but I definitely really loved it. Um, I did really relate to Georgia a lot and her experience. And so that was awesome. I really liked all of the characters, though. and. It just was a fun book. I liked it a lot. I am struggling with my rating. I really enjoyed it, but after reading Own Voices reviews, I feel like I just can't give it five stars, and we'll get into my criticisms later, but I'm sitting right now at a four-star 
leaning towards a 3.5, but maybe y'all can redeem me with this discussion and I'll move up to a 4.5. I don't know. I'm all over the place. I have no idea how to feel. So I'm with you, Haley. I rated it a four star and that's more of an object objective opinion because I really feel like I could hand this book to someone that's like 16 or 17 years old that are, that are just trying to discover their sexuality. And I think this would be a very, very good book. However, it's not my genre. Um, I typically read like hard sci-fi and high fantasy books that it's like tons of world building. And so when I read something like this, it just doesn't quite do it for me. So um, I decided to make my objective opinion around a 3.5 to four stars as well. So I loved this book. I gave it five stars. This is probably going to end up in my top five, top 10 favorites of the year. And immediately after reading it, I added it to my favorite shelf. So I really adored this book. I felt really connected to every single character and I just adored reading about them and their friendship. And I just, I absolutely loved it. And I'll explain more why in just a little bit. But before we jump into spoilers, I wanted to let everyone watching know that there are own voices reviews in the description below that you can go check out. I left a few positive ones as well as a few negative ones. We can't obviously speak for every single experience represented in this book. So I wanted to make sure that those were represented by people who were actually of those categories of those. I can't speak today. Someone else take the lead because I can't. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you got that. All right, so let us know in the chat what you guys rated it, if you have rated it already, and we can jump into spoilers. So first and foremost, what did everyone think of the plot and the writing style of the book? Um, I really liked it. I really like this kind of story, like a coming of age kind of um, stream of consciousness kind of style. Um, I don't know, I really liked it. Um, I liked the short chapters. I liked the pacing for the most part. Um, and just in general, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have anything deep or thoughtful to say. I like the short chapters. I feel like that helped me get through it really quick. And I was reading and reading and then I realized that I was like, halfway through and I'm like oh oh my god these short chapters are amazing but then at the same time I would not know what's happening I'm like wait how did I read 100 pages what even just happened so that was like a downside of the like stream of consciousness style I also just don't like books with one perspective. I read a lot of thrillers, if you didn't know, Thriller Queen, and I love books with multiple perspectives. So just getting one person's experience, although the book is obviously about George's experience, I felt like it was a little lacking and I just wanted Rooney to have a POV. Mm -hmm. I would have loved Rooney POV as well. Yeah, I actually felt the opposite about the short chapters because I felt like I would get through so much reading and I'm like, man, I've knocked out 10 chapters and I realized like only 30 pages had gone by. And so I felt almost fatigued by all the chapters and the scenes that were happening because it felt like for me, so many things were happening plot wise, but then I would only get through 50 pages. And so I got this book about a week ago and I was reading it up to this last minute because I, I wasn't able to read much each night before I was like, okay, <laughs> my brain's had enough. And then I would set it down. So um, for me, that was actually probably the biggest criticism was I felt like so much stuff happened in such a little time and it didn't flow very well um, from scene to scene. I felt like it was very jarring, I guess is the best way for me to put it but it's almost something that's really hard for me to, to articulate because it's just like a feeling that I have when I'm reading a book. And it's really hard for me to put into words because I felt this before with other books, um, but that's just how I felt while I was reading it. I think I know what you mean with the short chapters. Like sometimes, especially because they didn't like, the scene didn't continue into the next chapter. It was like a chapter was a scene and then it was yeah. kind of jump to the next thing. It was kind of choppy. Mm -hmm. I think I agree with that. Um, mm -hmm. I always like short chapters though, because I always like the minimal amount of words on a page. <laughs> I don't know, it just makes yeah. me feel reading faster. But I think I would have enjoyed it more if it wasn't 430 pages. Yeah. And so I felt like it was a ton of chapters. Yeah, I know, I totally see what you mean. 
Personally, I really liked the short chapters. This book actually took me, I want to say like two weeks to read, which is really uncommon for me. I usually will knock a book out within like a week or less time period. And it's just because every time I picked up this book, I felt like I was hanging out with these characters. And like, I just wanted to be invested like in that time space. So I would like read a little bit each day and it would just make me so happy to be there for the time that I was there. And I don't know, like I just, I really liked the length. I thought it could have been longer and I would have been perfectly happy, but obviously I'm probably an outlier there. I, I thought it was immaculate in the length of each chapter. <laughs> You raving about this book is just making me smile so hard. <laughs> I feel like I look so stupid, but whenever you talk about it and rave about it, I'm just like, Mare. <laughs> Stop. That's every time I like, click on your channel and watch a video of yours, I'm like, wow. <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything to say about the pacing of the book? Mm -mm. Cool. Uh, there was a note here about the pop culture references. So what did we think of those? Um, I thought they got a little bit repetitive. Um, but as a general rule, I'm kind of against pop culture references because mm -hmm. I think they definitely can date the book. Like even if they were relevant when it was written, it doesn't feel relevant anymore. But I think um, the particular pop culture references Alice Osman used, I personally liked because it's stuff that I also enjoy and relate to. Um, and they weren't, like, I don't know, just in general, like, fan fiction and pairings, like, that stuff lasts for longer than, like, six months. Um, mm -hmm. And she's talking about a lot of rom-coms and stuff that were popular in, like, the 90s. Um, I think that the pop culture references were done, like, as well as possible. And I think they felt authentic to Georgia as a university student in 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it was done really well like none of them took me out of it and that's mm -hmm. how i know that i'm being bothered by a reference is like it takes me out of the story and i'm like oh yeah i do remember that movie and i wasn't doing that so i feel like yeah i totally agree with y'all there i i can see how it would be a little bit dated in a few years but i laughed out loud so many times reading these references and usually like i'm against pop culture references in books because sometimes they read just a little bit cheesy or cringy but they were just so well done and exactly like the kind of pop cultures that spoke to me <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i felt the humor was something that was very 2020 and so i'm curious to see how some of the jokes that just the banter between them will age well. I I don't know if it will. Um, That's true. Like, it is like love that for us and like that kind of thing. Like, yeah, we probably it's funny now, now, but like, but if someone yeah, they're like, we use them, now, they're gonna use them even in a year. Like, yeah, yeah. and then they're going to be like, oh god, remember when we said yeah. that? <laughs> I didn't even think of that because I yeah. love like the group texting mm -hmm. chapter. How they would be like, oh, that's yeah. rude. I'm like, oh, I talk like that, girl. I get you. But if I read a book said in 2016 based off how I spoke mm -hmm. in 2016, I think I would be cringing at myself. So that's a yeah. Good point. Yeah. I feel like though for mm -hmm. us though, maybe even if like we specifically read this book in the future, it might not seem dated to us. It might seem like nostalgic to us, but yeah. like a new reader that picks this book up five years from now, it might seem silly to them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No, I definitely agree with that. I, I loved the phrase, like, love that for us. And like, that's a mood because like, I say that so often and I wish I didn't because people are probably like, can you find a new catchphrase? But <laughs> I, it was so funny to me. I was like dying laughing every time. I thought it was funny that um, they referenced TikTok in it. Yeah. yeah. It so I new and modern. And then at the same time, I was like, what if the US got rid of TikTok like this week? Because <laughs> all that stuff was yeah. happening. And I saw that reference in there. And I'm like, ooh, that would have been awkward. <laughs> so there's some discussion in the chat about Shakespeare. So I virtually know nothing about Shakespeare. So I loved their references. Yeah, I can agree with that. I don't know a lot about Shakespeare either, but personally I found that the references didn't actually take me out of the story. So I was kind of neutral about it as an addition. Yeah, I like know some of the Shakespeare plays that they were doing. So like, I think um, where I like got the reference, I really enjoyed it because there was a lot of parallels between the plays that they were doing and their real lives, which I thought were funny. Um, 
but you did kind of have to like know what the play was about to get some of those things. Cause I didn't get the ones obviously that I haven't read. So I agree with you. I think, I don't know. I liked the Shakespeare part and I think the ones that I didn't get didn't really take me out either, but. So um, a few years ago, I was doing a book club with a couple of English teachers. Not, I wasn't in it, but I was reading along with their podcast and they did much ado about nothing. And I was like, okay, I haven't thought of, I've never read Shakespeare since high school. So I was like, let me pick it up. And so I read it and I thought it was awful <laughs> because I, I didn't understand it. Cause I'm like, I don't get what's going on here. And um, one thing about this book club that I was in was they only did movie adaptations. So they would do one week where they would read the book and then the next week we'd watch the movie together. And the 1993 movie of Much Ado About Nothing is fantastic. And it's like got Kate Beckinsale in it from when she was like 17. Um, Denzel Washington, Keanu Reeves, like all these huge stars before they got famous did this movie in the 90s. And it's hilarious because they are taking themselves so seriously. And they're like, this is going to be my shot. And it's, it's a good movie. So I highly recommend that. I wanted to also share this comment from Skylar because very true. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> in five years about love that for us. <laughs> All right. So now that we've talked about the pop culture references, I know we kind of touched on this already, but what did y'all think of the plot or the lack there for of? Because personally, I wasn't bothered by it. Like I said, I, I'm a very character driven river. river? I'm not a river. I'm a very character driven reader. So I just liked being with them, but I can definitely see how this book was frustrating for people who crave more of a plot in books because literally nothing happened. Yeah, I mean, like I said before, I don't mind not having the plot. I liked spending time with these characters and I didn't really need like a story progression necessarily. So I liked it, I was fine with it. I feel like if I did feel attached to a character like very strongly, I it wouldn't have bothered me. But because I didn't really connect with any of the characters, except for Rooney, absolutely love her. I was kind of just flipping, trying to find out like what's happening. And then when I saw Rooney's name on a page, I'm like, okay, gotta read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't know how I feel about that. Um, Cause I felt like a lot happened. Like there was a lot of plot points um, between the ball, uh, in all the clubs and societies, I guess, what they were in. I don't know. I felt like a lot actually did happen. It just was in the background. So. Yeah, there was a lot of like little individual side plots going on that mm -hmm. maybe didn't necessarily need to be there. I don't know. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with you. Don't expose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for them too. Actually, <laughs> I mean, once we start discussing characters, I will go in on every single one of them. So, <laughs> except for Rooney, are you going to have to too? Rooney deserves so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Laura, you actually brought up a point that I was about to. Um, I wanted to move to the setting of the book and like what we thought of it being at a college setting. Um, mm -hmm. I personally didn't even notice that they didn't go to any single class. <laughs> We talk about them sometimes. That's not the yeah. important part of college anyway, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not interesting. <laughs> what did y'all think of it being, like, at a university setting? Because for me, like, I loved hearing about that. I feel like in young adult books, we never are at a university or college setting. And, like, that's where I am at in my life right now. So I felt more seen rather than, like, some of the other YA books that I've read this year because they just read a little bit too immature for me. And I felt like these characters were people that I could actually see being my friends and like people that I know. Mm -hmm. I think I felt most seen and validated when reading this book when I was reading about like Georgia's first day of university experience. Like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, like it just brought me back and gave me so much anxiety because I had like a freshman week too in college. And like I was expecting to go there and have this like college experience and 
I hated it. Like I made one friend my whole first year of college and just did not have the experience that I thought I was going to. I definitely think I went to the wrong school and transferred and had a better experience later. But like my first year, just I just felt so seen by <laughs> George's experiences and I, it hurt me reading it because I was like, oh my God, that was me. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was very nostalgic for me because I kind of had the opposite. I had a Rooney-like experience in undergrad so i was reading those parts just like oh girl you getting into some shit i already know like that's me girl um yeah i was very nostalgic and it made me happy mm -hmm. yeah i the thing that i i think i put in the uh the doc is what a good college experience is because i definitely went into college too and i was like i've got a party i've got to you know just be crazy and um it's I, I wonder how many different students act differently just because society puts those standards on college students where they're like oh everyone's doing this and you you know the people mm -hmm. that aren't actually doing it are just in their dorm studying and it's i wonder how many people just act completely different because as soon as i was out of college i never partied again <laughs> like i was like I'm over it. Like, it's not something I would normally do, but everyone around you is doing it. And so I thought that was really funny that she was like, so determined to have this good college experience. And it's like, what is that even, you know? Yeah. Cause definitely I think a lot of people after they graduate is like, well, I could have studied a little <laughs> harder. <laughs> so. Do you have any more thoughts on that? Or do you want to move on to the next section? You can keep going. All right, sweet. Let's move into characters. So in general, how did we feel about them? Because I know with our last book, full disclosure, there's a lot of complaints about just the characters reading immature. Did you find that with the same experience with Loveless or do you feel like they were more appropriately aged? Um, I personally felt that they were more appropriately aged. Like I, yeah, I didn't think that they sounded immature. I thought they all sounded very like authentic as college mm -hmm. student characters. Um, and I just really, in general, really loved all the characters and connected to them all for different reasons. I feel like I empathized with every character and I liked understanding their motivations and the different things that were going on in their lives but I didn't identify with any of them if that makes sense mm -hmm. like there was nobody that I could attach myself to and read it and put my myself in that place and that's what I like to do when I read I like pick a character I'm like okay that's me so whatever happens mm -hmm. to me, that'll happen to me um but I couldn't do that and I think that's what kind of maybe lowered my rating a little bit. Although I loved the characters and I felt for them and they were just sweet baby angels. I just didn't see myself there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I ever read to find myself in a book. Um, and I don't know if it's because I read, you know, such a wide variety of genres. But I don't think I've ever read a book where I'm like, that's me. And so um, whenever I was reading this, um, I, I really, what am I, what am I even trying to say? Um, but sorry, I've completely lost my train of thought. You're fine. Um, oh, the age. What I think was interesting is we read a book that was so similar, like the parallels between our last book club and this one was like the theater kids, the, um, you know, the diverse friend group, all of that was so much similar. And yet we were only reading people that were maybe a year older. And so that just more validated my feelings for full disclosure, because I felt like that was read so young. And I'm like, we fast forward like a year, and I feel like this was much more age appropriate. So yeah, I definitely agree with everything you guys mm -hmm. said, um, especially Haley, like, I don't know if I necessarily like identified with it. like I never saw a character and I was like that's me but I just felt really connected to them because I found different parts of myself in each one of them if that makes sense is that really easy to say <laughs> I love that <laughs> 
I also just really love Jason. Like, can we talk about him? We're going to in a minute, but like he's, his humor was like iconic. I loved him. <laughs> he's such a sweetheart. Also, I love this comment from Laura. <laughs> I know. I, I was trying to figure out how to respond to that. I don't know how, but yeah, that has happened to me before. I'm reading and I'm like, oh, I love that girl. That's me. And she dies. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I think I watched like Supernatural a couple years ago and there was one character, like I never read about books or movies with like people that have my name, Meredith. And then as soon as there was a character named Meredith, I died. I was like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> the work is like, I listen to Crime Junkies, this true crime podcast, and there is like multiple episodes with girls named Jessica that get killed. And I'm just like, <laughs> stop. <laughs> that's even worse, because that's true. <laughs> that's funny. All right, so let's specifically talk about the characters now. What did everyone think about our main character, Georgia? I really loved Georgia. I definitely just felt like her voice was so authentic. And just the way like she processed things and um, was just trying to figure herself out was very like relatable to me. And I just really liked being inside of her head and getting to know her. And I just, I don't know. She just felt really authentic and honest to me. And I just loved that. I loved, I loved her character a lot. I liked her for sure. And I definitely empathized with her so much. And I loved being able to get inside someone's head when they're going through such a difficult and unique journey. I thought that was a great aspect of the book. But I... I'm sorry, she was a bit judgmental. And even though she would say things out loud, like, oh, Rooney is so sex positive. Here I go defending Rooney. I will do it to my deathbed. Um, <laughs> oh, Rooney's so sex positive. That's so great. But like, ew. <laughs> I, I know that that's like a part of her identity. So I don't want to like shit on that. But that can be like really hurtful if she would have said her like thoughts out loud. Mm -hmm. That really hurt Rooney or anyone else's self-esteem. So I just didn't like the way that that was done. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I think that's a valid criticism. Personally, like when I was reading it, that wasn't my experience or like my thought process behind like why Georgia would be saying something like you because like we know it's about her coming to terms with her own identity. So I always took it as like she thought like it was weird for her to have like romantic feelings because that's just not what her experience was. I never thought it was like necessarily her like shaming her for doing that. Yeah, I don't think it was meant for like to be that. I just think it could come off that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think a lot of it was rooted in jealousy too because she wanted, at the beginning, she even admitted, she's like, I want to be Rooney. And I think that kind of maybe came off just the wrong way. Because I don't, I don't know. I really, really enjoyed that she was beefing with a washing machine throughout. <laughs> like, that was she went upstairs because she was so angry that those people were so in love. And then she went up there and it was just a washing machine <laughs> making noise. <laughs> I loved that scene. I thought that was really funny. But um, yeah, no, I can kind of see that. I didn't think that necessarily when I was reading, but I could definitely see how there's a clash there between wanting to be accepted and also not accepting others. Yeah, personally, I really love George's character. I, I think that she read incredibly authentic. Mm -hmm. but, like she didn't shy away from th those thoughts or anything like that. Like you very much felt like you were inside of her head and you understood like her thoughts and feelings the entire time. And like, I was crying like nonstop reading this book because I just felt so empathetic towards her. And I, I just wanted to give her a big hug. <laughs> like, I just like, I felt really sad that she was having these inner thoughts and like, she didn't know how to express them to other people. Yeah. I also like that we grew with her. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like when we were reading full disclosure, um, it was almost like the main character already had everything figured out. And she was like teaching us about being HIV positive and mm -hmm. everybody already knew who they were at age 17. And I really, really liked that, I could give this book to somebody that 
was not that this experience speaks for everybody, but somebody could relate to this in a way that it felt very authentic and realistic. And we were learning along with the character. Like there was a scene where she had a conversation. She's like, I don't even know what these terms mean. Can you kind of explain? And it was a jumping board to her wanting to do more research and start to look inward on her sexuality. And so I, I really liked that about this book. And I think that's where this book really shined. Yeah, I definitely would agree with that. I loved like learning about it along with Georgia. Like I think that was like mm-hmm. the best way to educate the reader mm-hmm. about these different identities and terms. Um, and I thought it was done really well. I didn't feel like anything was info dumpy in this one. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I definitely agree. Do y'all have anything else you want to add about Georgia? I like Laura's comment that she just put out. Just yet. This one? Yeah. I never thought of it as like going through the stages of grief, but you're totally right. So especially like when you come to terms with something like that, it definitely is hard to realize that you're not like the normal thing that society wants you to be. And you do kind of have to grieve that. And like going through grieving, not having a, a partner mm-hmm. later in life like everybody Mm -hmm. thinks that you're supposed to um definitely is something that you have to like grieve and come to terms with and move on i like that comparison i love love that comparison i that feel i feel like that defines the whole book because i if you don't know i'm going to school to be a therapist so i run grief support groups and this could be something that was brought to the table and it just like makes me think of those kids and like a lot of people do grieve like the loss of a future and I feel like that's what Georgia was doing she had this future in her mind and she can't have that so she definitely had to go through the grief process Mm -hmm. I love that Laura I also thought it was interesting um, towards the end of the book when, is it her cousin that is also asexual? Mm -hmm. Um, And she was um, talking about how lucky um, Georgia was to have these friends and these support groups. So I think that really shows the perspective of two people that had, that identify the same way, but had completely different experiences where she was like, oh, I'm really, I wish I would have had this and here's Georgia like beating down on herself saying this is so terrible and then I just like how there's there was that uh difference in perspective yeah I totally agree with that and I like thought multiple times throughout the story like Georgia is so lucky to have these people in her life like she has so many good people around her like she is so lucky sorry I'm just reading the chat yeah definitely I didn't I didn't think about it in terms of the stage of stages of grief but now that you're bringing that up like it's totally what it is and I definitely agree and also going off of what Katie just said about her asexual cousin I loved that you do see more than one side of the coin like you see different experiences and while these aren't all the experiences that you could have Mm -hmm. um I I liked that it was just more than this is one experience and that's Mm -hmm. all we're talking about Do you want to move on to Jason? Sure. I like Jason a lot. You liked him? I did, yeah. I He's think not my favorite, but not. no. Who's everyone's favorite character, out of curiosity? I mean, mine's <laughs> what you say. Yeah. Mine was, is it Sunil? He yeah. was my he yeah. was like the backbone and he just like wanted to make sure everyone was okay. And I loved him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I did too. I think I go between like Rooney and also Jason because like Jason is like exactly the kind of humor that I have, but like Rooney was just a character that I had a lot of empathy for. So mm-hmm. Cool. So Jason, I thought he was super funny and a really good addition to the book. And uh, I mean, I couldn't imagine the book without him because, like, that is a big pivotal point is when Jason and Georgia start to date. So what did everyone think about that 
experience with them dating? Like, was that, was Georgia wrong for doing that? Is it morally grave? What are um, I definitely think it's morally gray. Like, obviously it sucks that Jason got hurt, but I also would never like fault Georgia for wanting to try because mm -hmm. She doesn't have the experience of having those emotions, so she doesn't know if like people just force themselves to have those feelings over time or like how it works. So I think I think it would have been better if she had been really upfront with Jason, being mm -hmm. like, Look, I don't like you right now, but I want to try and like you. And if you want to see if I can, we can continue. And if not, that's cool too. But at the same time, I don't even know if she would know how to like express that to him at that point in the book. So it's definitely a gray area. Um, I definitely felt empathy for both parties in that situation. And I don't think that like Jason wasn't wrong for being hurt, but I don't think Georgia was wrong either for experimenting because there's not really any other way to figure yourself out. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, it's always the best policy, but I, for the most part, that's how I felt. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's where the dragging begins. Um, Jason, he, he had a right to be mad, okay? And Pip had a right to be mad on his behalf, but Georgia is so genuine. And I feel like when you're looking at a morally gray situation, you have to take into account people's intentions and motivations. And Georgia had the most pure intentions. She really thought I could have true love and he could be the one here in front of me this whole time. God, I'm so stupid. Let me just fall in love with this man. And she really, like, that's what she really genuinely thought. So then when everyone got mad at her, I was like, can y'all not see what she's going through? This is a lot deeper than just hurting Jason's feelings because she had some kind of feelings tied up in it, even if it wasn't romantic or sexual love. Yeah. That was her close, close friend and she did have feelings involved and nobody was there for her. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, especially because at the end of the day, like. Jason and Georgia are friends and they're supposed to be there for each other. Um, mm -hmm. So it would have, like, I can totally see what you're saying and that he should have maybe been a little bit more understanding, but also I don't like to invalidate anybody's feelings. And it definitely is something that would probably hurt most people. So <laughs> like, I see both sides of it. It's hard for me to like pick a side at any, in any way. I wonder if, if she would have been honest from the get go though, if they would have worked out because I I wanted to ask the question is, do you think he was ace? I, yeah, I kind of got that impression a little bit too. Um, or at yeah. least that it wasn't like a deal breaker for him if she mm -hmm. was asexual. Um, yep. because he did mention that like, um, if you love somebody like sex isn't the most important thing. Uh, right. And even like not pushing her and being like, we can take it as slow as you want. We can do whatever you mm -hmm. want kind of thing. I got that same opinion. I wondered the same thing. Yeah. And even if she would have been honest with being like, I'm just trying to figure myself out. Mm -hmm. And it almost seemed like he was also in that stage, but Georgia was never concerned about his feelings. It was all yeah. kind of about her. And so, yeah, I wondered if, if she would have been honest with him from the beginning, they, they could have actually been in a relationship and been happy. Yeah. But, I mean, well, with her identifying as aromantic, like probably not. That's true. That's but, true. And like, I, I kind of want to say that she did care about his feelings. I mean, mm -hmm. at least on paper, she mentioned it a couple of times. Like, I really don't want to hurt him. I really yeah. genuinely want to see if I can like him. Um, she really genuinely wanted it to work, but it just didn't. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree with that. Yeah. I don't know if I can add any more to the conversation because I think like, Jess, you said it pretty much exactly how I feel. And Haley you brought up points that I didn't necessarily think about before. Um, I definitely think that Georgia was aware of Jason's feelings and that she tried to preserve them, but it was definitely more focused on her. And that's that's very true in like any experience. Like while you're always gonna think about someone else's feelings, you're always gonna think about yours first. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's still read really authentic. I I don't know what I would say is right or wrong either. It's definitely a very morally gray situation because you don't want to hurt your friends, but also like I don't think Georgia was wrong for trying because she did genuinely want to make it work. So I don't think there was any like malicious intent there at all. Like it was mm -hmm. 
it was just a bad situation from both sides because both people ended up getting hurt by it. Any more thoughts on that situation? Any more thoughts on Jason as a character? No. <laughs> we can move on to Kip, who is probably a character I have the most to say about. Um, mm. What did everyone think of Kip? <laughs> Let me pull up my notes. <laughs> Okay, this beef that I have with Pip kind of goes along with the Jason beef. She was very mad at Georgia for kissing Rooney. And I think she should have been understanding. I understand that she was upset as well, but she made it about herself, even though it was about herself and that's fine, but she should have understood that they were not a thing okay they were joke they were both just trying to figure their shit out and they were drunk and it was a bad situation and i don't think pip who's extremely confident in her sexuality and owning it should be mad at these people for questioning and going through their own journey like weren't you in that position before and then Another thing, which this has nothing to do with the character, but the way that this character was written, I didn't think this as I was reading, but as I read reviews, a lot of people were angry because Pip came off as like an exaggerated Latina character or like an angry Latina woman stereotype. And I didn't see that, but if they did, I definitely wanna make that known. That mm -hmm. could be extremely offensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do agree with you that Pip kind of like acted over overreacted to the situation. Like, I definitely understand why she was upset. Like, like Mayor said, you don't kiss people that your friends like. Um, but I, so like I understand. Like, she had every right to be hurt from that situation. But I also again think that she um, also should have been a friend to Georgia and especially after Georgia apologized and explained what was going on and explained that she was trying to figure herself out too. I think that that's when Pip should have started being more understanding and at least willing to listen to Georgia and work it out. It just seemed like she totally like, I don't know. I kind I of know. agree with how Pip reacted and yeah. that might be a lot of but I feel like if I was in her situation, I would probably react similarly because like Georgia knew how mm -hmm. it felt about Rooney and for her to disregard that, like even if it's a chance for her to like, you know, figure herself out. Like, I, I don't think that you should do that with someone that you know your friend has feelings for because like, especially when they're your best friend, like that's just breaking down a lot of trust. And so it's going to take time to build that up again. And I can totally understand why she wouldn't just accept an apology right away. So yeah, I agree with that too. Cause if I did put myself in Pip's shoes, I very much like value loyalty and friendships. And honestly, I'm not very forgiving and I do hold grudges. So if we're being completely honest, I probably would react exactly like Pip reacted, but like on paper, being in Georgia's head, I felt bad for Georgia's situation. Yeah. It could be annoying to read about, but like I definitely would have reacted like Pip. So like I can't even mad at her, you know. Like it's frustrating because you want that conflict to be resolved, but like I'm petty. Like I understand exactly what she's doing, and so like you know. <laughs> I think I was just coming from like my therapist brain, where I was thinking like Georgia was in crisis, and when you're in mm -hmm. a crisis state, you don't think through oh my best friend likes this person so i shouldn't it's just mm -hmm. i need to figure this out and you're what's in front of me yep so i don't know i really felt for her georgia could have been more understanding of pip's situation and pip could have been more understanding of george's situation there's a lot of miscommunication there and mm -hmm. i can see both sides but i definitely am more so on pip's <laughs> Do you have any thoughts on that, Katie? Um, I was just, I really, the only thing I wanted to add to it was the fact that I felt like 
this was where I started to, sorry, Haley, but I <laughs> wasn't a huge fan of Rooney just because I felt like she was kind of self-centered. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but um, she definitely did take advantage of Pip in that situation, but I'm glad that she apologized. Like she was able to see like, it was like a guy saying, well, you're not lesbian because you've never kissed the right guy. And it was an identical situation to that because she was using her to find out if she was also bi because she was having these questioning thoughts. And I feel like the intentions were pure for Georgia, but not so much for Rooney in that scene. And I kind of started not liking her at that point. I definitely see that. And mm -hmm. I, that like didn't click in my brain, I think because I am biased towards my extreme love. Mm -hmm. So now that's something I have to think about. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this book club does. That's why we always make like a rating at the beginning and a rating at the end. Y'all aren't taking away my five stars. I've made my mind. <laughs> so we're here for making me think more critically about the book. Mm -hmm. I agree with Laura. Um, she, I felt like Rooney was all over the place as well. Um, it was really hard for me to kind of gauge her and Pip's, no, not her and Pip, her and George's relationship because it felt like on the page they were fighting, but then they would laugh about it at the end. And so I, I did kind of feel like that relationship was, maybe I was just reading it wrong, um, but I was like, man, they really actually don't like each other because <laughs> she kept saying like, oh, Bruni's annoying me. But maybe it was like in a friendship type way. I don't know. I kind of agree that Rooney was all over the place. Um, I think the biggest thing for me was when Georgia like very first told her that she might not like like boys or girls or anybody. Mm -hmm. that She might be asexual and she like reacted pretty negatively mm -hmm. to it. And I was kind of surprised by that because throughout the whole story, she'd been like, oh, yeah, we'll find you a boy, whatever. Oh, we'll find you a girl, whatever. Like, it was very, like, mm -hmm. just go with the flow, like, whatever. And then she was like, no, that's not actually real. It was It was very, like, strange reaction to me. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel of character to her. Mm -hmm. I think it's because she was getting a lot of her self-worth and basing her, like, Mm -hmm. as a person off of her sexual encounters which we find out like later on so mm -hmm. I think somebody not relating to that at all and not even experiencing sexual feelings was just so yeah. foreign that it was just shocking to her yep that's I think true. Rooney oh I'm so sorry go ahead Jess no I just was saying that's true oh I was just gonna say that um I think that Rooney being all over the place was very intentional because yeah. Rooney didn't really know like what she wanted from life and she she didn't really know like who her friends were like if she had any friends so I wasn't bothered by that I think that it was important that she was kind of everywhere because like that's just how life is sometimes you don't mm -hmm. really know what's going on or like who you are and so seeing that struggle was something that I identified with mm -hmm. but I definitely agree that she did poorly react to Georgia like coming to coming to her and explaining like her romantic feelings and I don't know I yeah <laughs> yeah I mean I was I really thought she redeemed herself a lot like when she did apologize and she like realized on her own what how she reacted negatively and then from there on she was fine but and I do think that that's a good point that she was in her own kind of crisis and mm -hmm. Georgia throwing this at her from left field was confusing so um I definitely think she redeemed herself with her apology, but I just was kind of jarred by her reaction. It wasn't what I was expecting. Fair. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go on your rant now, Haley? <laughs> my rant? <laughs> your rant. rant? Okay, got my notes back up. Here we go. <laughs> I literally wrote, Rooney is my heart and soul. It's true. <laughs> But I have major issues with how Alice Oseman portrayed her character. In the beginning, Rooney was extremely sex positive and I loved that representation. I think it's a really strong and important message to portray to a young adult slash new adult audience. And I appreciated that. Also, she was questioning if she was bi, pan, 
providing visibility. You can love whoever you want to love. Yay, love that. But then her promiscuity was demonized and it got misconstrued halfway through, like she might be doing it for the wrong reasons or doing it to cope or escape her life. And yes, that is something that happens, but I don't think this was the right place to explore that because it took away from the sex positivity at the beginning. So the goal should have been to celebrate sex positivity and eliminate the stereotype that a bi or pan woman is intrinsically promiscuous or she'll just get with anyone. Yep. Those goals were just completely undermined when she started expressing regret for all these sexual experiences. Mm -hmm. And then when she finally comes out as pan and accepts herself and the label that she feels most comfortable using, it was just completely brushed over by every character. Like mm -hmm. I think Georgia's exact words were, yeah, that's what she feels most comfortable with. No, this is a big deal. Pansexuality with little to no representation. So why aren't we throwing a party? Why are we not buying party hats? Why are we not blasting the tunes? Like this should be an event. We should be celebrating Rooney. End of rant. <laughs> I definitely agree with you. I didn't necessarily think about it while I was reading, but now that you bring it to my attention, I definitely think that your points are valid. I also think that Rooney was an important character as a contrast to Georgia to show yeah. that both experiences are valid. You can have a like to have sex, basically, but you can also like to not have sex. And then that was kind of erased by saying that she was just doing it to cope. Um, yeah. yeah. I totally agree with that. And like, I get that this is Georgia's story and we're talking about asexuality, but I do agree that there should have been some more discussion around Rooney's um, identity. And especially, I think one of the reviews said this, like they didn't even discuss what the difference between bisexuality and pansexuality is. And I think that would have been at the very least something important to throw in there. Um, so I definitely get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I feel validated. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Party hats for Rooney. <laughs> Y'all have anything more to say about about her? Have you said your piece, Haley? <laughs> yes, I feel that my Rooney piece got validated and it put it into the universe and Rooney has been saved. <laughs> So we can move on to Sunil. Am I pronouncing that correctly? That's how I would pronounce it, but that doesn't mean anything. So <laughs> I looked up a pronunciation, but like it was like written, so I wasn't sure. Okay. Yeah, he, they were my favorite character. Um, I absolutely loved how Sunil was, he really was like a college parent to these. Uh, I, I know we don't have that kind of thing over here, but the way that Sunil like made sure everyone was okay. And I knew, I knew Georgia was hesitant to go to them and say, Hey, explain myself to me because it's not their job to, you know, do that work for Georgia. But I loved how Sunil was just so, <laughs> welcoming and made sure that Georgia had, you know, just a baseline of information and how they stuck up for the ACE community to, who was that other character? I forget. Lloyd. Lloyd. Oh yeah, Lloyd. Yeah. <laughs> Lloyd. And Lloyd. Just seeing that <laughs> scene happen and Sunil wasn't doing it for anybody except that's how he, that's how they felt. So I was, I thought that was, I loved, I loved Sunil so much. Yeah. I really liked him as like another representation of Ace as well. Like I thought, like when we were talking about um, Georgia's cousin Alice earlier, um, I liked that it wasn't just Georgia that mm -hmm. represented asexuality in this book. I thought that that was definitely a good inclusion. Um, I loved Sunil as well. I feel like um, 
I didn't think about this earlier, but it's kind of similar to like having a big in like a sorority or fraternity. Mm-hmm. But Sunil was way better, so I love my big from my sorority. But <laughs> mm-hmm. he just like was the perfect fit for Georgia, and he was such a sweetheart. I really loved his character as well. Yeah, I like with Sunil and with Jess um, how they showed like different mm-hmm. types or variations of Ace and Aro. Um, like identity things that you can be. I didn't even know about that. So that was like very educational. And he's also just a sweet baby angel. But it was like announced that he can go by he or by they, and those were his pronouns. And I don't know why that was included if all of the characters throughout the book refer to him as he. I wish they would have refer to him as they at some point and maybe had a discussion about that or somebody is like, why are you calling them they? And then it's like educational moment. He can be called both things. He accepts either one, but to introduce that and never bring it up, it just felt pointless to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The term aromantic was new for me going into this book and seeing that there was some people that separate the two and some people that um, just refer to it as one umbrella term. And I liked that there was just that little nugget that Alice Oseman threw into that book, but didn't sit down and like say, okay, kids, now we're going to sit down and talk about, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I actually, you know, it was enough for me to go down a Google deep dive of all these things like it was for Georgia. And that's what I appreciate about this book and what I think it it did so much better than full disclosure, because full disclosure was like, okay, let's talk about HIV. And it's like, here's a bullet list of everything you need to know. Yeah. But it was kind of like, maybe you just nuggets to then explore it yourself. Yeah, exactly. And I, I took a lot of sociology in college. So things um, like this have always interested me. Like any kind of like social issues is kind of what I was more into in college. Um, But just getting like these little nuggets of terms always send me down a deep dive um, with things like this. Just things that I, you know, they're not, society doesn't see them as normal. And so they're things that just aren't spoken about unless, um, you know, you're in that community. And so I, I really liked how this book tackled it. I think it found a good middle ground. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree. It wasn't info dumpy at all. Like, I feel like it was the right balance between like explaining things that you might not understand as the reader, but also like encouraging you to go out and do research. So for sure. Yep. Cool. Anyone have anything else to say about any of the characters we talked about? I don't think so. Cool. So I see on the document here that there's like a section for sexuality and labels. Does anyone want to like launch into that conversation? I'll just say this. Um, Sorry. I read a lot of own voices reviews after because I didn't feel like I could say like, oh, I feel seen. This is a great representation because obviously Mm -hmm. that's not how I identify. So after reading those, it was pretty split 50-50 from the ones that I could see. Uh, Half of them were five stars. This book spoke to me. This is exactly how I was feeling. And then the other half was one star. I feel erased. I feel invisible. And one of the reviews brought up the term sex repulsed, which I had never heard of before. And that was obviously how Georgia identified, although it wasn't explored and the term was never expressly named. That is like, I don't know if it's like a division of being ace or aromantic, but that seemed to be how she identified. And a lot of ace people don't identify that way. So it would have been helpful if that term was brought up and explored and maybe compared to someone like Jess, who I think it mentioned that she wasn't disgusted by sex, but she did identify some form of ace or aromantic. So I think just even though a lot of terms were explored, if that was thrown in there, maybe it would have helped 
those people that gave it one star and felt a little bit unseen be a little bit more validated. Yeah, and I think it would have been almost better if we had a discussion of how it's on a spectrum because sex repulse is like one end of the spectrum. Whereas like a lot of people fall somewhere in the middle. And I think that probably is where a lot of the complaints come from in being erased and not seen is that um, it's such a far end of a spectrum that it doesn't represent mm -hmm. most people. Maybe that identify as asexual. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I totally understand that. I think um, a lot of my, what I wanted to talk about too was how Georgia talked about how, even though when she discovered what she probably felt comfortable identifying um, as, she experienced a lot of self-hatred because she mm -hmm. finally realized that she wasn't fitting into the heteronormative mold. Um, mm -hmm. And I just thought that that was such an interesting conversation and not something that talked about a lot and we kind of touched on this earlier when we were talking about um the stages of grief and like mourning uh the future that you thought you were going to have but um like it can feel angering um and you're so conditioned to be a certain way that when you figure out that you're not that way you feel like something is wrong with you and that you are so abnormal and nobody is like you and you go through some kind of process of self-hatred and it just was really honest and authentic, I think, to see that on the page. Um, and you kind of do have to like deprogram yourself from thinking that the only way mm -hmm. to be happy is to have a partner and to have this like nucle nuclear life and nuclear family. Um, and I know that people don't like mean to be um, like, what's the word? Demeaning when they say like, you'll find somebody eventually or don't worry, like you'll meet the right person. Um, when like you don't necessarily have to to have a happy and fulfilling life, even if mm -hmm. you're not like asexual or aromantic. Um, but it, that's just reinforcing the stereotype that like you need someone else in your life to be happy. And I think that's really a negative thing to tell anybody, really. Mm -hmm. um, it just really has such a larger impact on your psyche than I think people realize. Um, so I did think that that was an interesting discussion. And I I'm very glad that Georgia worked through that, but it probably takes some people a lot longer to work through that. I'm just mm -hmm. um, mumbling now about nothing, so. No, I, I really appreciate what you just said there, because um, that was like a big part of the book that like made me so emotional is like just her coming to terms with that and coming to terms with her label and like still having like self-hatred over it. And like, it was really, really upsetting to read about. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of books too, especially like YA queer contemporaries, they like, as soon as somebody figures out their identity, it's like fireworks, like this amazing thing. When for a lot of people, it's hard when you come to this realization. And mm -hmm. I really just liked that this represented that. Um, yeah. Do y'all have any more points you want to talk about within that discussion? Anything from the comments that you want to bring up? I'm I'm cackling at this comment. Whoever wrote the um, J.K. Rowling's friends would not, he would she would be friends with Lloyd. <laughs> well, yeah, that was me. <laughs> well, because we were talking in the um, the Discord about how there are there's still discrimination within the LGBT community, even yeah. though it's an inclusive community, and yeah. that's a perfect example because when J.K. Rowling was being a turf and being like, "Well, I have mm -hmm. lesbian friends that also think this way," and it's like, "Great, they're still turfs, even if they're lesbian." Yeah. It's like, yeah, they still don't believe in the validity of trans people, and they're wrong. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so that's why I put that in there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because I think it goes both ways. Like I was talking about how like cis white gay men in particular can be discriminatory. And I've like heard that they are have been discriminatory in certain circles. But the same is true of like cis white lesbians, like anybody who is, I feel like gay and lesbian are seen as the most normal of the queer mm -hmm. identity. 
communities. And sometimes, especially if they're of the older generation, they don't really understand the gray areas and the fluidity and people Mm -hmm. are afraid of what they don't understand. So then that becomes discrimination and prejudice. Mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of that stuff comes from. And I thought that that was a good thing to include in this book too, in the character of Mm -hmm. Lloyd to show that even if you are gay, you can still be discriminatory and have things to learn. And that's where the discussion of a spectrum would have been really beneficial in that conversation too. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Intersectionalism is always good. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with pretty much, I don't have anything to add. You said it perfectly. Um, one thing I do want to mention, this is separate, um, but was just something that I really loved about this book and is why, like, I loved it so much was just, like, the theme of friendship and how at the end, like, Mm -hmm. Georgia realized, like, she didn't need a romantic relationship because, like, she had this friendship right in front of her that she wasn't, like, like, she didn't view it as the same because society tells her, like, it's not the same, but, like, Mm -hmm. having that friendship is just as important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really loved that as well. And I really liked the conversation at the end between Rooney and Georgia about how like, Rooney was like, I want to be your friend for life. Like I want you in my life forever. And even if I have a partner, like you are still going to be such an important part of my life. And I always struggled with that in high school, like when friends would get boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever, yeah. and they wouldn't be your friend anymore for a while. And it's like, yeah, are you really my friend if you don't, if you can't, yep. like in high school, it's a little bit different because everything's like new and exciting. But even like as you get older, you have to balance that. And it's nice to find people who are willing to balance you in their life mm-hmm. in a way. And because friendships are so, so important. Um, for a fulfilling life. So I really liked that Rooney Mm -hmm. said all that to Georgia. I thought that was really probably very special for Georgia and very touching for me to read about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the part that I was closest to crying. I didn't cry, but that part was, I felt it. (laughs) It's probably because Rooney was in the scene. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I, I just loved everything about the friendship represented in this book because like it shows that like these friendships require like a lot of work and effort like and you're gonna have arguments but like at the end of the day like you're all still so connected and you're all still gonna be there for each other and like Mm -hmm. i just loved when they dressed up as scooby-doo characters like that that they went for each other just to like show them that they still cared about one another like Mm -hmm. dressing up as scooby-doo characters to show jason that like he is still such an important part in her life Mm -hmm. and doing the college wife proposal to uh, I almost said Rooney to Pip because like she wanted to resolve that argument like it just shows like how important her friends were to Georgia and yeah. just it made my evil heart melt and I loved it <laughs> <laughs> and I just liked that that they were like worth fighting for and she just had such a good circle of people that it was just I yeah I loved the friendships in this book too every single one it was great mm-hmm I want to be a part of their friend group. <laughs> yeah, me too, honestly. I really loved Jason and Sunil's friendship too. I feel like that was like an underrated part of the mm-hmm. book, but I just I liked that they like instantly connected and were like even outside of the group. I just thought that was so cute yep. and precious. And I love how they're all getting a house together for their next year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that's all I have to say. Does yeah. anyone have any like other topics? Is anybody reading? No, this book is still very precious. Yeah. To me. <laughs> I feel like I decided on a solid four. Good. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where I am too. I'm glad that everyone had positive feelings about this book. Then. Yeah, me too. I feel like it was a really good discussion, and I really loved this book. So I'm definitely glad that we read it. Mm-hmm. Jess, do you want to take the lead here and talk about it? So our next book for next month, it will be on my channel, and we are going to be reading The Shadows by Alex North. Um, there it is. I should have got my copy. I do have it. <laughs> I got you. 
And our live show is going to be on Sunday, October 25th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time if you're on the East Coast like me. Sorry that I included it in Central Standard Time. I didn't know it's it. okay. You guys are all in Central, I think, aren't you? I'm the only one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're ever wondering, that's why it's in Central Time, because I'm the least important member of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that you're the least important, it's that you're outnumbered. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I'm very excited. I loved The Whisper Man. I gave it five stars. I don't know if that's the most popular opinion, but that's why I picked The Shadows. So you guys are welcome. <laughs> it was Is a it also a UK Monday. author? I'm sorry? Is Alex North U a UK author? Mm, I don't know the answer to that question. Oh, okay. I, I don't know why I thought that. I'll look it, I'll look it up. He lives in England. Yeah. Oh, he does. Okay. Cool. And then I'm... The month after that, we're going to be doing um, the House on the Cerulean or in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Clue. I want to say on too because that's grammatically correct. It makes me angry that it's in. I know, I know. I, I, I in the, it's not in the sea. It's not in the sea. So long, and I think Kirsten made a post on the House on the Cerulean Sea, and I was like, I'm pretty sure she said that wrong. And then I went and grabbed my copy. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been saying this wrong this whole time. But, <laughs> but um, it was actually a book that I started. And um, I loved it so much that I wanted to share the experience with somebody. And so I was like, I'll just put it off and we'll re I'll read it together in November. I was very glad when I saw that. That was the thing mm -hmm. I'm excited for that one too. Mm -hmm. I was like screeching at the, mm -hmm. at the Discord because literally the library, like my whole tid just came through and they're like, I know, I'm saying <laughs> book. And I was like, okay, but I'm glad I didn't because. Yeah, I, I had put a lot of thought into my pick because I feel like my the books I've picked have kind of been the wolves in our book club. And I'm like, I really need to come like swing in to, for my next month. <laughs> I've liked every book <laughs> we've read. Full huh? disclosure was the only one that was a little bit <laughs> not great. Well, but I didn't like. The I sundown. liked every single other book that we read. Yeah, I loved the it. sundown was like middle of the road, but I was like, and then you guys I like like loved it five stars, and yeah, I was like, I need to, I need to step up my game. <laughs> I already know I'm gonna love it. I already know get five stars. <laughs> But yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, if for some reason you're here and you're not in our Discord, that's linked down below. Please join us. It's a lot of fun. And also follow all of these lovely ladies' channels. They're all linked below as well. And we'll see you guys next month on Jess's channel. So Thank you, Haley, for joining us. Yes. I want to be here every month. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.